The Kraft Foods Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> It's The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. <music> Thanksgiving weekend. Each year at this season, the good citizens of Summerfield make a pilgrimage of some 30 miles to witness the annual football classic between State University and the Aggies. And in the whole of Summerfield, there is no one more determined to go this year than Gildersleeve's nephew, Leroy. For weeks, he has been hammering away at it. Hey, Uncle, if I do the dishes tonight, can I go home? Can I? How about it? Can I? No. No, Marjorie? Nobody asked you. Uncle Mort, if he goes to that game, I shall just die. Oh, why? Because Marshall's coming home for the weekend, and he's taking me. And all Leroy wants to do is spy on us. Boy, that's a cheap thrill. <laughs> You when I can be watching a football game? Uncle Mort, don't let him go. You can't. You simply can't. Now, my dear, I think that's for me to decide. That's telling her. I don't see why Leroy hasn't just as good a right to the go to the game as you. You hear that? After all, I think you might consider his side of it, too. Yeah, how about considering my side of it? You stay out of this. <laughs> but, Uncle Mort, this is my only weekend with Marshall since he went away to school. We want to be alone. Alone? They go to a football game to be alone. <laughs> now, Leroy. I suppose you'd like everybody else in the stadium to get up and leave. 20,000 people. Leroy. I rest my case. <laughs> well, what about it, Uncle Mort? I shall think it over. Oh, say yes, please. I'll pay you if you will. I'll give you all the money I've got in my bank. I'm not subject to bribery, my boy. Well, I'll do anything you say. Anything. Oh, how about it? I told you I shall think it over. Well, for cat's sake, how long do you have to think? <laughs> there are two sides to this question, my boy, as there are to most questions. Now, from Marjorie's point of view, I can see why she wouldn't want to have you tagging along. Thank goodness. From your point of view, Leroy, I can see that this game means a great deal to you. More than anything in the world, I guess. Except you, Unc. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Well, the only thing I can see to do about it... Yeah? I hate to say this, but the only thing I can see to do about it is to take you myself. You mean you? Yes, my boy. Much as I dread it, I'll take you to the football game. Yay! You hear that, Marge? Hail to the victors, valiant. Hail to the conquering heroes. Oh, good evening, Bertie. Is that you, Uncle? Yes, it's me. Hey, did you get them? Did you get the football tickets? I was a good boy today, Uncle. I cleaned up a whole room, even my closet. Did you get good seats? Where are we sitting? Uncle, you didn't forget them. <laughs> no, Leroy, I didn't forget them. But I'm afraid I have bad news for you, just the same. They're completely sold out. Oh, that's a big jib. I know, my boy. I know exactly how you feel. But uh, we have to learn to take these little disappointments and make the best of them, don't we? Gosh, if you didn't have to think it over so long, if you'd gone and got on the boat... I did the best I could. After all, I'm just as disappointed as you are. It means that I can't go to the game either. Ha! <laughs> you didn't want to go in the first place. <laughs> That's not true, Leroy. I wanted to go very much. Yeah. But there's no use crying over spilt milk, is there? There'll be other games. Some other time, perhaps, eh? <laughs> Leroy... <laughs> I want you to believe that I tried, my boy. Why, I even asked Judge Hooker to use his influence. Not that I'd give two cents for all the influence he's got. <laughs> I should have known. I should have known I'd never get there. This is just a terrible day, that's all. It's been a terrible day right from the start. Friday's always a terrible day. Leroy, honey, what's the matter? Nothing. Oh, now, don't do that. <laughs> Let's not give up hope, my boy. After all, there's still Judge Hooker. Yeah. Well, you're probably right. <laughs> Every time you say you'll take me to a football game, this is what happens. Leroy, this is the first time I've ever offered to take you to a football game. Well, it happened, didn't it? Yeah. I should have known. 
Now, Leroy, you're just tired. Why don't you go up and get ready for bed and let Bertie bring your supper to you up there? I don't want any supper. Well, later maybe you will. You run along and I'll be up. I got turkey croquettes for supper. And mashed potatoes? Mashed potatoes and gravy. Okay. <laughs> No, I'll get it, Bertie. Uh, Hooker, come in, Judge. I can't stop, Gildy. I just came by. Leela, I didn't see you standing back there. Uh. <laughs> come on in. It's cold. Well, just for a minute. We're on our way to dinner. I'm taking Leela to a movie afterward. Oh, so that's why she was busy tonight. <laughs> You didn't tell me you were going out tonight with the judge, Leela. I don't tell everything I know. I sort of cut you out there, didn't I, Gildy? <laughs> old goat. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> careful, my dear, careful. <laughs> Come in. Hello, Marjorie. Hello, Mrs. Ransom. I hope I didn't hurt you. Oh, good evening, Judge. Marjorie. Oh, don't you look pretty. Thank you. Such pink cheeks. Mm, and natural, too. I... I'll bet you are excited that Marshal Bullard's home. Oh, he's been home for two days. Uh, Unky, is it all right if we go skating after supper? After supper? It's perfectly safe. There's a big moon out. I don't know that that makes it safe. <laughs> <sighs> skating in the moonlight. How I'd love to be out there with y'all. Well, why don't we? We could all make oh, a... wait a minute now. Leela and I have a date. Oh, yes, that. Well, how about tomorrow, then? But tomorrow's Saturday, Uncle Mort. Marshall and I are going to the game. Oh, 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 yeah. I'll tell him it's all right about going skating tonight, then. Well, now, wait a minute. I did... Well, all right. Thanks, Unky. You're a dear. Yes, yes. Oh, to be 16 again instead of pushing 30. <laughs> football games, skating in the moonlight. I used to love football games. We used to drive up to Atlanta when Georgia played at Georgia Tech. It was such fun. The girls looked all so pretty and the men were all so handsome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there'd be parties at all the fraternity houses after the game and a dance at the big hotel there in the evening and driving back by moonlight. <laughs> Come on, Leela. I think it's time we were getting along. Oh, yes, I suppose it is. Oh, that reminds me, Gilda. I almost forgot what I stopped you for. I got you that pair of football tickets you asked for. You got them? Just leave it to old Judge Hooker. There they are. See. Well, that's, well, that's fine. <laughs> are they any good? Are they any good? <laughs> Why, they're right smack on the goal line. I don't know whether to thank you or not. But thanks, anyway. Oh, Shrockman, don't tell me you got tickets for tomorrow's game. Huh? And never even told me about it. Aren't you wonderful? <laughs> <laughs> I might point out it was I who got the tickets. Oh, but it's the thought that kind. Yes, but Leela, you... Oh, I think surprises are such fun, don't you? Now, here I wasn't looking forward to a thing tomorrow except washing my hair. And now, all of a sudden, everything's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> but Leela, Imagine I... me carrying on about how I love football games and all the time you knew. Rock Martin, you devil, you. <laughs> Leela, you don't understand. Don't understand what? Well, I wasn't exactly planning to, I mean... You mean you were planning to take some other girl? No, no, of course not. Gosh, I'd rather take you than anybody. I would have asked you too, Leela, only I didn't think of it until yesterday, and I suppose by this time you'd... Well, the last time I saw you, you bawled me out for always inviting you places at the last minute. Rock, Martin, honey, it's time you learn never to pay a single bit of attention to anything I say. Ever. Leela, I don't like to hurry you, but it's time that we were getting downtown. Oh, yes, we must be going. Yeah, but wait. We've got to be going, Gildy. I have a reservation for dinner. You don't need a reservation at Joe's place. <laughs> we're not going to Joe's place. Come on, Leela, for heaven's sake, let's get started. But we haven't settled this. Oh, well, don't worry. I'll call you first thing in the morning about the clients and all. Good night, and I think you're alive. <laughs> what am I going to tell her when she calls? Martin? 
morning, Mr. Gilsleeve. Good morning, Bertie. Leroy? Hi. I trust you slept well last night. You can see that I didn't. You do look a little so-so. Well, you just sit down and I'll bring you a nice phone. I'll get it. Uh, where's your sister, Leroy? She ate her breakfast and scrammed. I'm coming! <laughs> you mean they've started for the football game already? I suppose so. Lucky bums. Mr. Gilsey's residence. I'm afraid I know what this is. Oh, yes, Miss Ransom, he is. It's Miss Ransom, Mr. Gilsey, about the game. Huh? <laughs> uh, ask her if she could hold the wire a minute, Bertie. Hmm. Could you hold a while, minute, please? You'll be right here. Leroy, I want to have a talk with you, my boy. Okay, shoot. Swallow that toast and listen. My boy, if by any chance I should be able to get tickets for the game today. Mind you, I don't say I can, but if by any chance I should. Yeah? And if it turned out that it wouldn't be convenient for me to take you. What? You promised. I know, and I'd make it up to you, Leroy, some way. I don't like breaking promises, but if you'd let me off just this once... How about it? I don't know. (laughs) Leroy, please, just this once. I'd have to think it over. I'll make it up to you, my boy. I'll do anything you say. How about it? How you doing, Miss Ransom? Oh, just fine. You be right here. Mr. Gilsey, she's waiting. Leroy, stop eating that toast and answer me. I'm sorry, my boy, but I told you I'll do anything if you let me off. It's going to be a pretty good game. I'd sure like to see it. Anything, Leroy, anything at all. Anything? Anything. Okay. You'll never regret this, my boy. You'll never regret it. I only hope I won't. Hello, Piggy. Leroy, the kid himself. Boy, oh boy, Pig, have I got unk where I want him. What a character. You know what he did? He told me about it. The Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a moment. After a friendly game of bridge the other night, we all dropped into the kitchen to kibitz a bit while Mrs. Lang was preparing some sandwiches. And as she was spreading the bread with parquet, one of the guests said to me... So that's the parquet margarine I hear you talking about, John, on the Gildersleeve show. That's the genuine article, the one and only parquet margarine. Well, if it's as good as you say it is, I... Well, the best way to find out is to taste it right now. Ah, here we are. The first sandwiches are ready. Thank you. Now, there's flavor for you. Flavor that's fresh and sweet. Am I right? Hmm, it's delicious. It's the fine, wholesome farm products that make parquet taste so good. And you know, friends, you'll have the same satisfying taste experience the very first time you spread parquet margarine on bread, toast, rolls, pancakes, and waffles. I'm sure you'll agree with the millions who prefer parquet margarine, that it's still unmatched for flavor. And it costs so little to enjoy parquet, only about half the price of costly spreads. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine, made by the Kraft Foods Company. Now let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. With a blonde on one arm, a buffalo robe over the other, and a brand new bucket hat perched on his head, Gildersleeve looks the complete American college boy, 20 years out of college. We join him now as he and Leela Ransom stroll past the State University campus toward the stadium where the big game is soon to begin. Aren't we having fun, Throckmorton? Yeah, you bet. You know something? Walking around a college town like this makes me feel like I'm 18 again. Oh, you look 18, Leela. And I'll tell you something else. I don't feel a day over 22. Let's skip, I dare you. <laughs> oh, Throck Martin, with all these boys and girls going by. What do we care? Come on, let's skip. <laughs> <laughs> it's Marjorie and Marshall Bullet. You Well. Well, I saw you up ahead of the 
that dare, Uncle? Hello, Mrs. Ransom. You remember Marshall, don't you? Indeed, I do. It's nice you could come home for the holiday, Marshall. Thanks. How are you, Mrs. Ransom? Mr. Gildersleeve? Just fine, my boy. Uncle, where did you get that bucket hat? Uh, this hat? Well, I got it at the Summerfield Men's Toggery. What's the matter with it? Oh, nothing. It just looks kind of collegiate. That's not what the college men are wearing this year, Mr. Gildersleeve. That's immaterial to me, son. <laughs> <laughs> I needed a hat in case of rain. Well, I think he looks very cute in it. Although, if you pulled it a little farther forward... Like this? It was better the other way. It's nuts. Marshall, I do believe you've grown just in the few months you've been away. Put on 15 pounds, been playing a little football. Oh, speaking of football, shouldn't oh, we you be... you seem to be in such a hurry, Throckmorton. Why don't we all go somewhere and have a bite to eat? First? Well, Marjorie and I are going over to the Beta New House for lunch. That's my father's fraternity. Uh, uh, well, you kids go on and have lunch. Maybe we'll see you at the game. Look for us, Unky. Marshall got seats right on the 50-yard line. The 50? Well, we're not far from there. <laughs> uh, see you later. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. I wish we didn't have to sit way down by the goal line, Throckmorton. Well, I'll see what I can do. But it's pretty late. I wonder how that Bullard kid got seats on the 50. Well, I suppose he got them through his father. Yeah, I suppose so. Well, bye, George. I'll go to the box office and tell him who I am. Don't worry, Leela. We'll wind up with the best seats in the place. Pardon me, ma'am. I'd like to exchange these seats, please. Uh, they're in the section uh, 32. I'd like something on the 50-yard line. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> yes, very funny. Uh, perhaps you didn't understand me. I want to exchange these tickets for a pair on the 50-yard line. Oh, run along, buddy. Nothing doing. Wait a minute. It just so happens I'm a public official. I'm the water commissioner down in Summerfield. Water? <laughs> I hear it's good to wash in. <laughs> Don't get smart. Are you going to sell me tickets or not? Look, we've been sold out since the 10th of September. Now beat it. Then why are you open? For next year. Oh! <laughs> Wise guy. Ought to report him. <clears throat> why don't you look where you're going? Say, buddy, uh, you really want two and a 50 like you said? I sure do. Have you got two? Shh. Not so loud. Oh? 50-yard line, 35th row. And, uh, seeing it's so late, huh? Well, I'll let you have them for 20 bucks apiece. Why, that... That's robbery. Twenty bucks a piece? Pardon me, mister. I thought you were a big shot. Oh, I am. Here. Give me the tickets. <laughs> Being a big shot is kind of expensive. Look, honey. The band down there on the field. They're getting ready to spell out something. Say, look at those uniforms. Welcome, Aggies. Pretty clever. Throckmorton, not we having fun. You bet. Why don't the teams quit practicing? They've been practicing all season. Let's start the game. Oh, let me see the program for a minute, Throckmorton. Mm -hmm. My, look at this picture of the state captain. Isn't he high Tom Lingenfeller. Certainly looks dumb. Oh, but look at those shoulders. My. Probably wearing shoulder pads. I'll tell you something else. A lot of these football players aren't as strong as they look. The Army had to reject the whole flock of them. Mm -hmm. I suppose so. But, of course, a girl looks at these things a little differently from the Army. Yeah. Uh, oh! <laughs> There's Marshall. Marshall where? Down there, just two rows in front of us. You! Hi there! Oh, why, that... He's got his arm around Marjorie. Hey there, what do you think you're doing? It's rock, Martin. Cut that out, young man. I'm watching you. <laughs> And don't grin at me like that. Oh, for heaven's sake, Throckmorton. What harm is there in the boy putting his arm around in a public place like this? Don't tell me. It feels just the same in public as it does anyplace else. <laughs> does it, um, does it really? You know darn well it does. Mercy, how would I know? <laughs> there, how's that? Marjorie, turn around and watch the game. Third down. This time it looks like they're going to try a pass. How can you tell, Throckmorton? By the formation. When one fellow stands back like that... Was that a pass? No, it was a punt. 
They should have passed, though. If they keep punting all afternoon, I don't know how they expect to score. Is it still nothing to nothing? Certainly. There they go. Oh, an in run. Stopped him dead in his tracks. That fellow couldn't run around a mailbox. Oh, what's that whistle call, Throckmorton? Just stalling for time. Come on, quit stalling down there and play football. Throckmorton, people are looking at you. Let them look. They're not stalling, mister. Al Stample broke his leg on that last play. Oh. Oh, isn't that awful? Look, they're carrying him off. The poor boy. Mm. Stample must have been in bad condition. I told you these football players weren't so husky. Hey, you cold, Leela? I'm perfectly comfortable, thank you. Oh, that's funny. I'm cold. Well, to tell you the truth, every time you start to hold my hand, Marshal Bullard turns around and laughs at me. Oh, he does, eh? That young, smart Alex. That's right, Martin. He's just a child. Although I must say he seems much better looking than when he went away. Don't you think he is? I'm watching the game, Leela. Oh. Second and ten. Maybe they'll try a pass this time. <laughs> Through the line. How can you tell, Throckmorton? I couldn't see a thing on that play. When everybody falls down, it's a line play. <laughs> He gained about a foot. Well, he tried anyhow, and that's what came. Never make a touchdown that way, Leela. Now I suppose they'll kick again. There, there they go. Kick the ball back and forth. After you, my dear Alphonse. After you, my dear Gaston. Why, George, we don't get some action pretty soon, Leela. I'll go down and complain at the box office. All afternoon they've been playing, and nobody's even tried. And once again, the ball changed hands in this nip and tuck battle between State University and the Aggies. Oh, boy. Believe you me, folks, both these teams are playing heads-up football out here this afternoon. What a game. They're lining up again now. State's ball on their own 40-yard line, T formation. Come on, State, let's get a touchdown this time. The ball is snapped to Captain Tom Lingenfelder. He gets the ball and... Come on, Lingenfelder. Lingenfelder fades back, takes a line to the left, runs for the hole between right guard and right tackle. He's through. He's away. No. No, a beautiful tackle came right through and stopped him cold. I tell you folks, you've never seen football like we're seeing today at Har- Hardman's Field. Did you hear that, Bertie? Lingenfelder almost got away, but they stopped him cold. Is that a fact? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you want to listen a while, Bertie? No, thank you, Leroy. You hear your uncle saying anything? Not yet. <laughs> now it's fourth and six for State, falling back into punt formation. Crowds in the stands are tense as Tom Lingenfelder opens his hands for the ball. He's got it. He kicks. Back and forth, back and forth. Nothing happens. Well, I think it's very exciting, Throckmorton, for a football game. What do you expect? A pass once in a while. You gods have only tried about three and none completed. Hey, Lingenfeller, why don't you try an aerial attack? Why don't you drop dead? Oh? <laughs> Who said that? I said it. Oh, oh, you. Yes, me. These boys are playing swell football, and they don't need any advice from you. <laughs> Just a suggestion. Tourist. <laughs> I paid for my seat, didn't I? I should think that would entitle me to make it. Now what? Nothing. You know, Lena, looks like it might rain. I don't think so, Throckmorton. How can you think such a thing when we're having so much fun? I don't really think it'll rain. I don't think anything at all is going to happen here this afternoon. Oh, Throckmorton, honey, I'll drop one of my gloves just now. Do you see it anywhere? Glove? No. Must be down under the seat. Oh, would you mind looking down there for it? My hands are cold. Well, if your hands are cold... Uh, later, darling. But find the glove now for me like a sweet boy, won't you? Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Old peanut shells down here. <laughs> Chewing gum. See? <laughs> Neil, what happened? Come on, Come on, Tom. Come on, Tom. Come on. Oh, my God. Oh, jumping up and down on my fingers. Oh, Mom, are you still down there? See? Here's your glove. What was all that racket? Somebody threw a pass and Lincoln fell to call it and made a touchdown. A touchdown? Why didn't you tell me? Well, I was too excited, Throckmorton, and it all happened so quickly. The only play of the afternoon. Oh, Uncle, wasn't that a beautiful pass? Oh, yeah, scrumptious. <laughs> Throckmorton. What's the matter? I fell to drop a ranger, 
Einstein. Rain, you couldn't have. It's... So did I. It's a cloudburst. What'll we do, Leela? Maybe it'll stop in a minute. I'll stay if you will, Frog Mom. Well, I... I had a slight cold yesterday, and I... Uh, why don't we give up and go home? I must say, I thought you were more of a sport. Well, I'm not a sport. Come on, let's get out of here. Pardon me. Pardon me. What's the matter, mister? No school spirit? Oh, 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 oh yourself. Soaking wet. Bucket hat. Bucket is right. Isn't it, Miss Josie? Did you have a nice time at the game? Yeah, don't speak of it, Bertie. Don't speak of it. Well, it's too bad it had to rain. Maybe a little supper will make you feel better. I don't even feel like eating. I had a couple of sandwiches half an hour ago. Well, I'll dish it up anyway. Mom, is that you? What's the game super on? Super? What game are you talking about, young man? The state Aggies game. The one you saw. I heard it on the radio. It sure was super. The re- How do they do it? Say, Uncle. Young- I've decided what I want for a reward for missing it. Oh, all right, my boy. What is it? Take me to the state game next Saturday. Oh, Leroy, anything but that. The great Gildersleeve will be dropping in at Peavy's Drugstore in just a few moments. How are you getting along with your food budget these days? Are your meals pretty expensive? Well, maybe I can give you a little help. There's a very important food you serve at every meal that certainly shouldn't be expensive. And that's the spread you serve with bread, toast, and rolls. Of course, the spread I have in mind is delicious parquet margarine, preferred by millions of families throughout America because it tastes so good. And as for economy, well, it's plain as the price tag in your dealer's store that parquet is only about half the price of costly spreads. And parquet margarine is so nourishing, too. It's one of the finest of all energy foods, and it's fortified with important vitamin A. So for a real value in a quality food that's still unmatched for flavor, buy parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine, made by Kraft. Are you fond of football? Uh, football, Mr. Gillespie? <laughs> yes. Do you like the game? You mean, do I like to play it? No, no. Do you like to watch it? Are you a fan? Well, Mr. Gillespie, I'll tell you how it is about me and football. When I was a young fellow, I lived in Worcester, Massachusetts one year. And that fall, I took it into my head to go to the Harvard Yale game down in Cambridge. Is all this necessary? Well, you asked me a question. <laughs> I didn't realize you'd have to answer by the way of Worcester, Massachusetts. Well, if you don't want me to tell you... No, go ahead, Peavy. You would never give a straight answer to a question anyway. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. Go ahead. Well, I've lost the thread now. Why did you want to know if I liked football in the first place? Well, I thought if you did, you might enjoy taking Leroy to the state game next Saturday if I could get the tickets. Yeah, so that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, I am fond of football, but I'm not that fond of it. Yeah. <laughs> I might have known you'd be of no use to me. Good night, Peavy. Good night, everybody. <laughs> this is John Lang speaking for the Kraft Foods Company and inviting you to listen in again next week for the further adventures of the great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Another fine Kraft food product you'll want to add to your shopping list is Kraft Salad Mustard. This creamy, golden Kraft Salad Mustard puts an extra tempting tang into relishes and sandwich spreads, peps up the flavor of deviled eggs, adds extra zest to cheese and meat dishes. And if you like an extra tingle of sharpness, there's another delicious variety in the Kraft line. It's the Kraft Mustard with nippy horseradish added. Buy both kinds and please the whole family. Ask for Kraft Mustard's when you shop tomorrow. This is the National Broadcasting Company.